Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenMara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today, tonight, whenever you see this, I would like to offer the elemental energy reading for love and romance or relationships in general. But this month, I'm going to do things a little bit different. Instead of doing all four in one long video, we're going to break them up into individuals. So we're going to start with Fire, which covers Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. And the way I like to do these readings is we'll see where the chakra energy is and what kind of vibe we're getting for each one. Um, and then we will look at the tarot to see which messages come out to fill in the blanks on that information. With that being said, we start with the singles within the element, and then we'll move into the couples within the element. Uh, if you're curious about your elemental alignment, if you want to have your charts done and you want something kind of affordable that's pretty accurate, um, there's a link in the description. It's not a promotion or anything. It's just I really like their, their product, which is the natal charts, and it comes with the Merlin report. It's 10 to 20 pages, depending on what's all in the chart of your element, what does it mean, what each of the symbols mean in each of the houses, and then looking at like your five-year generation, your 10-year generation, and the energy that goes along with that. So that's linked down below. And if you're inter interested as to why I read for the elements instead of the zodiac signs, that's in the description as well. <laughs> so for our fire singles, and fire is Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, you have number eight in the chakra deck, which is play. This camera is not like that green at all. <laughs> and with play, what I'm hearing is this is a great time for fire singles to really tap into their joy, to tap into cutting loose, doing something just because it's fun to do. Um, they're saying that this is, before I read out of the book, <laughs> this is, they're saying that this is a good time for you to step up and just really look at how to enjoy life more there's been they're saying this it's been a little bit slow and stagnant in the world and if you're looking for relationships maybe not look so seriously look more um, in the aspect of joy and happiness not so much in must get in relationship today because that changes the dynamic so we will start off it is the planetary association is mercury and mythologically associated with the Roman god of Mercury, the winged-footed messenger of the gods, and Buddha in Eastern traditions, Mercury has wisdom that transcends the boundary of the mundane world and def deftly juggles the extremes of worldly duality. Known for auspicious qualities, Mercury's symbolic nature is youthful, intelligent, analytical, progressive, inventive, risk-taking, quick-witted, and communicative. So, you're definitely working with an energy of being open to new ideas and definitely your communication is going to be what is going what I'm hearing is going to be the more on point thing and the best way to move forward is to be open to communication that means how you're put, putting yourself out there and also how you're understanding other people putting themselves out there and this is in the second chakra which is the um, <laughs> sacral chakra just a little bit below the belly button there and the key words are innovative thinking, powerful ideas, versatility, communication, adventure, opportunity, wit, playfulness, recreation, amusement, travel. So fire singles. Definitely they are saying be open to new things, be open to new ideas. Um, don't take life seriously, especially with relationships right now. It's a good time to just kind of go with the flow. If you're Since you're single and you're look, you might be looking, just enjoy life join a hiking group do something along those lines that is getting you out there but it's not in a must go on to dating site or must go track down spouse today that's not the vibe that they are looking for this particular month <laughs> so a little more definition with the tarot we have the number zero major arcana so this is big life lesson energy here we have the dreamer embracing true purpose um, new adventures and trusting yourself when the fool comes up or the dreamer in this particular deck it's saying things are in a new spot you are starting off on a new journey in the traditional tarot you have um, 
the fool the dreamer is kind of tripping in this one they have a more upright but you have this naivety going on it's heading you off towards <laughs> a future tower um but it's a lesson period you're starting new you don't you may not know where you're headed right now especially in relationship world you could be quite content being single and that is great but if you're heading out into that world of trying to find a partner of trying to find new friends a new friend group things might be a little bit um interesting they're not saying don't do it they're saying pay attention as you go along <laughs> and your second card for the tarot for singles is number one the magician so you have the tools available you can do anything take charge of your life manifest what you need to be successful so when you you're starting something new but you already have some tools is what this card is saying it's saying that no matter what's going on you don't have to know the outcome. You don't have to know how this is going to turn out. You're starting off the dreamer. You're the naive idiot of the tarot. You're starting off new. You're, you don't know what's going to happen. And that's good. That's fun. You have the tools to get you going. You have that ability to communicate. You have that ability to um, project or present, maybe is a better term, um, the person that you were wanting to attract. Because if you can present what it means to be that type of person, you're also going to help attract that type of person. If you're looking for a partner, if you're looking for friends, by putting yourself out there and being fun loving and happy and relaxed, things are going to work a lot better because that's what the type of person you're gonna attract is. Um, but they're really saying that this communication part is, it's not just verbal, it's how you present. Communication, a lot of times you can tell a lot about a person by how they walk into a room, by how they introduce themselves. They might only say their name or like, hey, nice to meet you, I'm so-and-so. That can be enough to give you a lot of information right off the bat. And when you do the same, you're presenting a whole bunch of information to the other person. So fire singles, pay attention to your communication. It's not just words. So uh, we will hop over real quick to our fire couples. And it could be you are the fire in the couple in the relationship or it could be your partner is the fire um, however that works out and shows up for you we are looking at fire couples and these decks if you're interested are linked in the description um, this particular chakra deck was actually a gift from a very dear friend of mine and I have had a lot of fun exploring it still not a master at it but we're, we're working on it you have number 38 for fire couples this is the unity card I'm <laughs> I'm feeling the union of opposites. There's the image on the card has a deity that is half man, half man and half woman. Um, you notice by the weapons, the stance, this side is more de bejeweled. Um, obviously there's a little <laughs> uh, brassiere there. Um, so I'm kind of curious as to what this one is. What I'm hearing though is this is a balance where even though you're in a relationship, you're in a partnership. They're emphasizing that word partner. There's not one of you is not better than the other. They're saying this is a path of when you come together, allergies are fun. Um, <laughs> when you've come together in a relationship, it's the two becoming one concept. You're joining and that's what is showing up on the card is this bonding of two people. And we're in the sixth chakra. So this is your third eye area. The card, the deity is, oh goodness, Ardhanash. Odd Harnar Shiv Shivara. Um, in this in front of the sacred mount Kalish Kalash Kailash, sorry. <laughs> this half Shiva male and solar energy and half Shakti female lunar deity stands in divine unity, being at two as one. Their perfect balance of opposites dissolves duality. The trident symbolizes the three aspects of birth creation, life preservation, and death or rebirth. The lotus represents the purity of mind and the beauty in the unity of experience. So what this card is saying is simply when you came together, you brought different tools with you. The trident over here and Shiva or Shakti is holding a lotus, which you can't quite see because the light. <laughs> anyway, um, but we're talking about the three aspects of life we're also talking about this concept of when to come together the ability to create manifest and overall design the universe so to speak 
is coming into action. That's when Shakti and Shiva would join, the universe would spark into being. Creation occurs from a union of opposites. And it doesn't matter if it's two men, two women, we're not talking about that. There's always this vibe of a masculine and a feminine within any partnership, and that's what's being brought forward here. Uh, keywords are unity, wholeness, integration, balance, developing your ability to see your, with your third eye, trust, being your authentic self, and making right decisions. But we can also look at the concept of um, intuition tied into that. And the beauty of this, especially in this department, because you have ex uh, ascended from the everyday um, wants and needs, and now you're into that spiritual communication with each other because you're at the third eye level where you're not down in the lower levels where it's strictly physical, it's the everyday, you're stressing about everything. You still might have that, <laughs> but you're able to connect at a higher level. So those things, they're important. They get handled. It's not a big deal because you guys are on a different level. You've connected higher um, is what I'm hearing for this particular reading. And when I say the union of opposites, if you look at a relationship, and I don't give, a, I don't care if it is a standard straight relationship, if it's two men, two women, if you look at it, there's always an aspect, a dynamic of one is just a little bit more masculine than the other, the other one is a little bit more feminine. So you're still bringing in those concepts and those energies of the masculine and the feminine because that's when creation occurs. So, and it, like I said, doesn't have to be huge differences, but that is the dynamic that comes into play. So, your first card is the Prince of Winter. Intellectual, determined, focused, and impulsive. Seek out intellectual solutions to your problems. The need to act quickly and decisively. Sudden or unexpected changes. This tied into Unity says your strength is going to be with your partner this month. It is not going to come from an outside energy. It's definitely going to be the bonding of the two of you together. The Prince of Winter is a pretty active card. It's saying there's a lot of things that are going on, as mentioned before, but it doesn't mean that you guys have to be stressed out or frustrated by them. The two of you together are a tight bond. You are the unity card. <laughs> Therefore, you can actually work through these, and you'll do it in such a subtle way because you're talking not just in the physical realm, that it's it's like you don't even have to think about it. It just happens. The bright thing continues to move forward and you keep growing in, within the relationship. Your second card is the Four of Summer. This is coming across as a warning. Like, don't do this. Being distracted, failing to see an opportunity, ta taking someone or something for granted, discontentment with life. Just because you're having a little bit of chaos with the Prince of Winter, that doesn't mean that you can disconnect from your partner. It does not mean that you can distract yourself from what's going on or the life that you have chosen to lead. You guys are energetically wise in that concept of unity. You are tied into the third eye chakra. So fire couples, take account of what's going on this month. If there's something that's been a little bit stressful, don't pull away from your partner. Your partner is your partner. They're there to help you work through this. They're there to support you. You're there to support them, to help them work through it. S work within your relationship because the unity that you have bonded with, the unity you're growing, is actually very much about being able to weather the storms with, as the little otters or minks faces here, with joy. You can go through these situations happy, but don't pull away from the other person because that's what happens is when you're ignoring the other person because, oh, I, I need to handle this on my own. It's my stress. I have to deal with it. You don't because you're in a relationship and that's what that means is you're in a partnership at that point. You're working with another person because you don't have to do it alone anymore. So. Hopefully this month works out great for everyone. Fire singles, it looks like you guys are going to be having some fun, relax, enjoy life. Fire couples, don't forget you're in a partnership. Work with your partner. You're very connected. This month's energy uh, projection is really about being in that spiritual connection, that third eye, your ability to communicate not only with words, but with how you treat each other and respond to each other. So as you're going forward through the month, work with the energies that we've talked about here. Um, if you have any other questions, thoughts, comments, suggestions, you can drop those in the comment box down below. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button, drop a like, all that fun YouTube online stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video.